Good morning. How is everybody doing? Uh, happy Monday. We are back again. If you're finding me for the first time, my name is Penny. I come here five to six days a week. My hope is to inspire you. I hope you can listen and learn something by the end of this um, broadcast. And I welcome you to my pers- into my personal space. And when you come in, please share this video. Let us learn together. So if you didn't attend our class from last week, we are doing budgeting. We are talking about our money. And it is so important that we talk about our money because uh, finances make everything. Without money, you cannot get treatment. So we highlighted the topics that are in this book. And we are just going to uh, run them down one step at a time. And that's, you know, what you do when you read a book. I've put in a few highlights that I'm going to um, share with you. So, we are talking about budgeting, okay? Uh, the, the purpose of bu- budgeting is to help you manage your finances. You budget because you want to be able to track how much money you're making and how much money you're taking out. You want to be in control of your finances. That's why we budget. You want to be able to create financial freedom through whatever little money you make so you are able to invest the money and diversify whatever little money that you have. That is what um, makes us want to be on a budget. And then also we don't want to waste so much money buying and doing things that don't add value to our life. So if you are writing a budget, you are going to write the things that you you know you have to pay, the things that are mandatory like your shelter, your food, uh, your kids' tuition. You're going to write all those things. You do a budget because you don't want to waste your money. You don't want to be using money on things that are not uh, adding value to your life. Okay. And once you you get out of debt, if you're in debt like me. You know you're paying interest every month, but if you stay on a budget, you're going to be able to save up a little more money so you can pay into your debt. Once you have a less debt, which uh, is going to enable you not to pay the interest, you're going to be debt free and then you're going to take that money that you've been paying on interest and invest in, in something that is going to change your life or something that is going to take you out of somebody's payroll. You don't have financial freedom until your money is able to work for you. Majority of us work for our money. If you can get to a point where your money can work for you, you'll be one or two steps ahead of everybody else. Okay? There is the difference between saving and investing. And and sometimes we don't differentiate those two things. But remember we said that out of $100 that you get, you're supposed to live on, uh, first, the first thing you do is save 10%, put it in a, in, in a savings account. Then you're going to take 10% and, and do what? Invest it, put it in something that can give you money back, okay? Maybe buy a stock or put it in something, do something that is, has to do with investment. Then you're going to take 10% and you're going to donate it okay you're going to to do things out there for other people and then now you have the 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 70 percent to live on so savings is an accumulation of cash in a secure space where there is no risk when you take your cash money and you put it in a savings account it is there nothing is going to change come to good morning nothing is going to change your money in america the savings account interest is very little so you really don't make any much money in a savings account. But the savings account enables you to go in and out and remove that money because you know what? That's a hundred. There is no risk in that money. It is there. And then when you go into investments, okay, on the savings, savings is money that you can always count on. It's there. When you're ready to go pick it, you can go get it. And then in terms of investing, okay, when you invest, you're buying something with the hope that it's going to increase value. So you take $2,000, you buy merchandise, you take it to the market, you place it on the table, 
and you hope that somebody buys it so it can bring you returns. In some cases, you end up not selling anything and we end up having what we call de dead stock. Dead stock is you taking $100, buying all these bracelets, and nobody buys even one. So that is investing, okay? And your investment can increase or decrease. If you go to uh, your cash app or whatever way you're buying your, your stocks, and like I bought um, Pinterest stocks last week. I went there and I bought stocks worth $15. And every day I'm looking at it, it keeps going down. And then I bought Coca-Cola. I bought $10 of Coca-Cola. It keeps going down. When you're putting an investment in any, any uh, account or anything that you're, you're taking and putting it in, in a, a certain place to... Um, to, to get returns. You might lose it or you might get it. So you're gambling with your investment. Put it in a high yield savings account. Yes, Kevin, but you know, Kevin, that one is when you, <laughs> that's, that's, that's not when you're living on negatives, okay? When you're on negatives, you have like two, three thousand dollars, like little money. It won't, like really, they, there's a cut. If you have 10K, you get this. If you have 20K, you get this. So, depending on where you are, okay? And then, in this uh, book, they are talking about building an empire with your assets, okay? They are saying the key to true wealth is putting your money to work for you. And you know that's where we are trying to get to. Like, I, I hope one day I'll get there. At 50, I'm still very hopeful. I'm, I'm not like at a point I'm saying, oh no, I'll always work for my money. No, I'm praying and hoping that my money is always money. My money is going to get to a place where it's going to work for me. Okay, and they are talking about practically speaking. That means spending money on income, income producing assets that will supply cash and continue to grow in value over time. The most common assets used to build wealth include stocks bonds in real estate i attended a class uh with my daughter like two years ago uh, on real estate they it's a guy that goes around so he was in a town by my area and we sat there and this guy showed us how easy it is to just build silent wealth through real estate you start you know slow you buy uh, uh, like one house two houses three houses you know and with time, you find that, you know what, you have all these houses and they're bringing you all this money. Okay? And then, in the next minute we have, they're talking about to create, to create a budget that will help you meet your goals. You first need to figure out what your goals are and define them. What are your goals? The steps, these steps, they've put steps down here that is going to help you to stay on that budget or create a budget. And then they are saying the key here is to think smart. And now, thinking smart means, and they've uh, put smart, S stands specific, be specific. Okay? M stands for measure. Measure your, your, your budgeting or measure your financial, uh, measure yourself where are you. We talked about that. Are you, are you like on the negatives, on the, on the positives? When you're starting to do these things, you need to, to measure yourself how you're doing. You know, you have to take a tape measure and measure, measure, like take note, okay? Set goals that you are able to achieve. That means set small goals. Start by saving $10. Start by saving $20, okay? Start setting goals that you can achieve so you don't feel discouraged. And then uh, R stands for realistic. You can't just wake up one day and you want to be a homeowner. So set realistic goals. Work on your credit. Try to put some money together. Try to strategize where you want to buy this house. And, and set realistic goals after you've measured where you are financially. And then T stands for time oriented. Okay? Make those goals and you, you you know be aware of the time that you're going to to spend on on those goals so in the next talk 
I don't want to extend this for long. In the next talk, we are going to break down the smart way of working, okay? Where they are going to tell you, break those, those, those um, goals in, in steps. So you're working on one thing at a time. You're not doing too many things at the same time. Because if you do too many things at the same time, that is how you um, end up in, a, in a, a bad situation. I was talking to my daughter this morning and I told uh, her that one of the things, although I'm not where I want or I would have loved to be at 50 years old, one of the greatest things that I'm grateful for, I don't know how, I can't remember how or who taught me, I have to have been in seventh going to eighth grade. I was probably 13 or 14 years old. I learned that I was responsible of where I was going in my life. I learned that I am going to start making good and bad choices for me. I learned that I was going to try and be better than my parents by taking responsibility of the choices that I made. And when I realized that in 7th and 8th grade, if you look at my report cards, because I have my report cards since I started school until I finished high school. If you look at my report cards, as I was progressing from the village school, Nyando Chivere, to Kisi Primary, to Eronge, to Sronga Girls, I went from getting 20% in class, 20% of 100, you can tell, yeah, I mean you can see. I went to 30%, I went to 40%. At one point when I was in like fifth grade, I was getting 50%. And that is the beauty of keeping records. My father did that for me and I can literally see how I did a test and I got 20% out of 100. And remember, it's because I was transitioning from a village school where I spoke all AKUC to a school where I was reading English. By the time I was in seventh grade, I was getting 70%. And that's because I realized that, you know what, I have to put a little more effort. By the time I finished eighth grade, I was finishing my final class, class eight, to go to high school. I passed very well, according to me, because starting from 20%, to have been able to make it to a school that I really wanted. Good morning, Mary Daddy. I, I wanted to be in Sronga Girls High. The school, they wore maroon uniforms. They just looked like the place I needed to be. And today I want to tell you that that's for me. And that's why I invite you in my personal space. Me making it to that school, into that school, me going into a school that I wanted to be in high school, gave me success. I felt instant success once I made it to that school through my hard work. And I was telling her, the moment she's going to realize that all her choices, everything she's going to make, good and bad choices, is going to be on her. It's her responsibility to work hard to make those choices for herself and to take responsibility when she makes bad choices. I said, you know what, you're going to be at peace. You're not answerable to anybody. And that's what I mean. We do some of these things, we go out of our budget, we, we, we buy homes, we buy cars, we do things to please people. But we never sit back and ask ourselves, all these things we are doing to please these people, who are these people that we are spending so much money to show them this and that? Who are they? Where are they in their life? After I, I've, I've pleased Kevin, I've pleased Maridadi, I've pleased Paris, I've pleased everybody by making financial, bad financial choices. Who are these people? Where are they in their life? For me, I was 13, 14 years old. When I decided or when I learned that I was responsible for where my life is going. And that's why I can come here without makeup. I can, I can literally, I do what I need to do because I owe myself everything that I'm doing. Some days I put lipstick, some, say, some days I don't. Some days I, 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 you know, I position the camera in a certain way. Because you know what, at 13, 14 years old, I, I learned that I'm responsible for everything. And where my life was going to go, I'm 100% responsible for my destination. And that's the challenge I have for you this morning, for your finances. Once you realize that you're the 
person who's going to make that final decision where your destination is going to be you're going to make better financial choices by staying on a budget and refusing to spend money that you don't have refusing to commit things that you know you are not able to do and that's what they are telling you be think think smart be specific where you need to work on your finances measure your success set goals that you can achieve set goals that are realistic and set a time frame when you're going to achieve those goals so that way you can succeed i hope i've inspired you i hope you listened and learned something that is going to give you a life that has quality in it we are all going to the same place we are all going in one aeroplane but the people who are fi flying first class are going to be, have, have more benefits than the rest of us in economy. So you want to live this life in the first class, you have to do what the people who are in first class did to be able to enjoy their journey. If it's two hours flight, for you to enjoy a nice space, good food and everything, you need to fly first class. You can't just fly first class. You have to take those steps to get yourself in a comfortable space where you are enjoying the journey you are not struggling through the journey we are all going to die but you can make your journey a little more comfortable by making good financial decisions for yourself cheers and please share this video and go to my youtube channel if you've not subscribed to my youtube channel please do that i appreciate that and god bless you